This is a really fun video about 30 untranslatable German words that don't exist in English. So you're going to love this. So you're going to love this. These are 30 or maybe 31 words that don't exist in English, but they exist in German, and I think you're going to love them. So let's jump right in with the first one. The first one is Backpfeifengesicht. It's like a slapping face, it's a face you want to slap because you're probably frustrated with it or have some other unexplainable German feelings about it. That's a Backpfeifengesicht. Second, we have a Brückentag, or a bridge day. We don't really have these in America, do we? There are days that are like Fridays, but the Thursday before was a holiday, and the weekend is coming up, so you have four days off and only take one day of vacation. How convenient is that? Next, we have drei Käse hoch, three cheeses tall. Now, this sounds really weird to measure something in cheeses, because who knows how tall a cheese is, but Germans measure things in cheeses. So if you're just three cheeses tall, you're probably not growing fast enough. Maybe you're, you're a little small for your age. Number four, we have Absenzela, a pea counter. This is someone who is really exact, really precise. They count every single pea, every single penny. They're obsessed with precision and every small detail. So don't try to pull a fast one on the absence law. They might also be a little uptight. Erklärungsnot is number five. It's like an explanation emergency. You have to explain yourself on the spot and think really quick and be right on your feet. Think of a way to explain yourself with Erklärungsnot. Number six is Feierabend. This is celebration evening when you're done working your nine to five. You have Feierabend. It's your evening off. You might go to the gym, you might go home and watch TV, you might go out for something to eat, or just sit in traffic in your car, I don't know. But when you have, uh, when it's time to go home, your colleagues will say, Schönen Feierabend, have a nice evening off. Fanby is number seven. This is a longing for something far away. You know, like homesickness is a longing to be at home, but Germans have Fanbay. They have a longing to be somewhere else. Number eight, we have Fremdschämen. Fremdschämen is when you're embarrassed for somebody. You see a stranger do something super embarrassing, you might feel Fremdschämen and be super embarrassed for them. Number nine is Frühjahrsmüdigkeit. You know, after a long German winter, you might not be feeling great. You might have a case of the Frühjahrsmüdigkeit, or springtime fatigue. So this is kind of like a sensitivity to weather, or you feel pain or depression. I don't know. Ask a German. Number ten is Geisterfahrer. A Geisterfahrer is someone who's driving the wrong direction down the road. I wonder why they needed to create a word just for that. It must happen often. I haven't seen it myself, but there you go. Geisterfahrer. A ghost driver. Number 11 is a mouthful. It's Handschuh Schneeballwerfer. It's like a, a mitten or glove snowball thrower. So if you can't pick up the snowball with your bare hands, you're like a coward. You have to put a glove on or a mitten to keep your hand warm. 
So it means you're kind of taking a coward's way out, I guess. Hanshu Schneeballwerfer. Number 12, we have Innere Schweinehund. That's your inner pig dog. And if you can't guess, it means something like your inner wild animal or the devil on your shoulder. Some mysterious voice pulling you into some activity you shouldn't be doing or some thoughts you shouldn't be having. It's your innere Schweinehund. Every German has one. Number 13 is Kindergarten. Kindergarten. You kind of have the name for it in English, but it's just the German word with one letter changed. So it comes from German, and we haven't made our own unique word for it in English. It's a children's garden. Kindergarten. Number 14 is Kopfkino, or head theater, head movies. It's the movie or film you supposedly have playing inside your head. Or it could be uh, different scenarios that you're thinking about. Maybe you're pondering different circumstances, thinking about different options or possibilities. Maybe you're daydreaming. That's your Kopfkino. Number 15 is Kudel Mudel. It's a really chaotic situation. So if you just caught up in some kind of mess and you don't know how you got there, it's a kudel mudel. Number 16 is kumashbek, or emotional bacon. It's the weight that you gain when you're going through a hard time. So if you lost a job or a loved one or you feel some kind of strong emotion that compels you to eat, you gain some Kumashbeck. 17 is Luftschloss, or air castle. It's the delusion of grandeur you have of a castle in the sky, or some unrealistic um, dream you might have that probably won't happen. Germans call it a Luftschloss. Number 18 is Ohrwurm, an earworm. Sounds terrible, right? But it's a song you have stuck in your head. If you just can't get the song out of your head, they call it an Ohrwurm. It's stuck in there. You're never going to get free of it. 19 is Pantoffelhead. A Pantoffelhead is someone who seems really brave and courageous but can't seem to stand up for themselves in regular everyday situations. Number 20 is Schadenfreude, or the happiness you get over seeing someone else's misery and suffering. I'm probably familiar with this German word, Schadenfreude. It's the ugly satisfaction someone gets from the misfortune of somebody else. Number 21 is a schnapps ED. A schnapps ED is an idea you get maybe after you had too many shots of liquor, maybe too many beers, maybe too many Bioschorle even. You got a schnapps ED and it wasn't very well thought through. And so Germans have a special word for that too. 22 is Sprachgefühl. It's a language feeling. It's an intuition kind of feeling. You might not know a specific word or a correct grammar, but you have a Sprachgefühl. You have intuition and it helps you make the right decision. A native speaker is more likely to have Sprachgefühl than someone who's just learning the language. 23 is Sturmfrei. Sturmfrei is when you're younger and your parents go away for the weekend or a vacation and you have your apartment or house all to yourself. You have the freedom to cook whatever you want, not to clean. You have Sturmfrei. 
Next we have number 24. Torschluss Panik. It's like the goal panic. When you're in a panic as a soccer player to get a goal at the end of the game. But Germans use Torschluss Panik to explain someone that's under pressure to do something in life like get their career going or start a family, get married. They're feeling Torschluss Panik or a pressure that they're running out of time. 25 is a Treppenwitz. A Treppenwitz is a staircase joke. So if you're talking to someone in the stairwell and you come up with a joke on the fly, on the spot, and call it a Treppenwitz. That's the perfect response you had. Suddenly, you didn't think about it at all before, and it was just absolutely perfect in the moment. 26, we have Verschlimmbesson. It's to worsen better. Literally translated, that is. It means you're making something worse when you are trying to make it better. So you don't always improve a situation by trying to do something. You might just make it worse. That's Verschlimmbesson. 27 is Wanderlust. Wanderlust is the desire to go hiking. It's the enjoyment of hiking. And Germans really love to go walking through the mountains and they get the whole backpack, all the gear on, and they get going up that mountain, across the islands. That's why you see Germans everywhere. They just have Wanderlust. They love to travel. Number 28 is Weltschmerz. Weltschmerz is the depression you feel because of all the world events going on around you. So if the world's state of affairs is just too frustrating and you can't deal with it, you might be feeling Weltschmerz, world pain. Number 29 is Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist is time ghost, or the kind of characteristic behavior of an epoch or spirit. You might have heard of the word before, but you probably won't use it very often. Number 30 is Zugzwang, or being forced to make a decision very quickly. Maybe you're not getting enough time to think it through. It was Zugzwang. So if you're feeling stressed and you have to make a decision anyways, there you go. It's Zugzwang in German. And I have 31, one more for you. Zweisamkeit. Zweisamkeit is the harmony of two people together in one. How would you suppose? Uh, Yeah, Zweisamkeit is like harmonic togetherness. So there you go. We got over 30 German words that don't really exist in English, and I hope you enjoyed them. And if you want to learn some more German, go over to mygermanizedlife.com for some German lessons. Get the German pronunciation guide, learn German grammar, and learn German vocabulary. And if you're a German teacher, you can get full 45-minute lessons ready to download and use them in your classes today. So come on back every day for some new shorts, and I'll see you next time. Bye, German learners.